Welcome to ASE exam practice test. Our topic today is engine repair. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for more courses and free practice tests. Number 1. Which of the following creates a flapping sound near the front of the engine? A. Timing belt tension too tight. B. Drive belt too tight. C. Drive belt too loose. D. Timing belt tension too loose. The correct answer is D. Timing belt tension too loose. Explanation. A loose timing belt will cause a flapping sound near the front of the engine. Number 2. A power balance test is being performed on an engine. Technician A says to note the engine revolutions per minute before and during the test for each cylinder. Technician B says to record the revolutions per minute drop for each cylinder. Who is right? A. Technician A only. B. Technician B only. C. Both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. The correct answer is C. Both A and B. Explanation. Technician A is right because engine revolutions per minute is an indicator of when that cylinder is contributing to the engine power and if it is balanced. You note the revolutions per minute before and during the test, so when the cylinder is shorted out you can tell if it changes. Technician B is right because when the engine speed does not drop or change, then that cylinder is not having an effect on engine operation or balance. Number 3. Which of the following should be the first step in diagnosing an underhood engine noise? A. Discuss noise with the vehicle owner. B. Retrieve diagnostic trouble codes. C. Check for symptoms in the online service manual. D. Road test the vehicle. The correct answer is A. Discuss noise with the vehicle owner. Explanation. You need an accurate description of the noise, and the owner is the best resource because they are experiencing the noise. Answer B is wrong because retrieving diagnostic trouble codes does not have any bearing on noise diagnosis, unless there is a diagnostic trouble code associated with an engine, part failure like a cam phaser that would make noise. Answer C is wrong because you may check the symptoms, but it is not done first. Answer D is also wrong because a road test may be done, but not before you discuss the noise with the owner. Number 4. There is a blue fluid beneath the vehicle. This fluid is most likely. A. Oil. B. Windshield washer fluid. C. Gasoline. D. Radiator coolant. The correct answer is B. Windshield washer fluid. Explanation. Windshield washer fluid is blue. Coolant is orange, pink or green. Engine oil is yellow or brown. Gasoline is clear or bronze. Number 5. The starter control circuit voltage drop test is used to test which of the following? A. Wiring and connections. B. Field coils. C. Commutator. D. Starter solenoid and field coil. The correct answer is A. Wiring and connections. Explanation. The purpose of voltage drop testing is to look for higher resistance. High voltage drops equal higher resistance in wiring and connections. There are specific tests for the other components listed. Number 6. Two technicians are explaining valve and seat tree finishing. Technician A says you must knurl the valve guides after grinding the seats. Technician B says valve seats are ground first. Who is right? A. Technician A only. B. Technician B only. C. Both A and B. D. Neither A nor B. The correct answer is B. Technician B only. Explanation. Technician B is correct, because seats are ground first then the valves are refaced. Technician A is wrong, because guides are knurled first before the seats are ground in the knurling process. Knurling is no longer an accepted practice in the field and is not recommended by the automotive manufacturers. Number 7. A technician is doing a power balance test with a diagnostic scan tool and finds one injector has failed but is receiving a good power supply. Which of the following should be checked? A. Voltage drop of the injector ground. B. Voltage check of the ignition power feed. C. Continuity check between the engine control module and injector. 
Decontinuity check between the fuse and injectors. The correct answer is C continuity check between the engine control module and injector. Explanation. Adequate power is available to the injector. Most likely the engine control module cannot ground the injector, so you do a continuity check between the engine control module and injectors. Answer A is wrong, because the engine control module is grounding the injector, because it does not have its own ground. Answers B and D are wrong, because the question stem states that the injector is already receiving a good power supply, so there is no need for a continuity check, and the fuse must be good. Number 8. The engine cranks, but will not start. Which of the following should be checked first? A. Ignition circuit. B. Ground circuit. C. Camshaft position sensor. D. Crankshaft position sensor. The correct answer is A ignition circuit. Explanation. On the typical symptom flowchart, the ignition circuit is listed as a priority item in the order of inspection to check first before the other listed as distractors in this question. Number 9. To raise and narrow a valve seat that has been cut at a 45 degree angle, a cutter or stone should be used at what angle? A 15 degrees. B 30 degrees. C 45 degrees. D 60 degrees. The correct answer is D60 degrees. Explanation. Grinding a 60 degree angle removes metal from the bottom to raise and narrow the seat. Grinding a 30 degree angle removes metal from the top to lower and narrow the seat. The seat is 45 degrees and 15 and 45 degree stones are used on 30 degree angle valve seats. Number 10. A vacuum gauge used to check an intake manifold vacuum is connected to which of the following components? A. Exhaust manifold. B. Intake manifold. C. Air cleaner. D. Catalytic converter. The correct answer is B. Intake manifold. Explanation. The intake manifold is the storage area for engine vacuum or low pressure. Connecting a vacuum gauge to any of the other three components listed will not read engine vacuum. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.